it's just a massive shock. You never, ever, ever think it will happen to you or your children. I'm Andrea and I'm Tom's mum. Well, we were like the typical parents. Tom, you're fine. Man up, stop drinking. You know, get yourself some paracetamol, go to the pharmacy and have a, have a good sleep and you'll be fine. Don't worry about it. So I wasn't thinking, oh, he's ill. I was thinking, oh, he's just done his exams. He's shattered, he's worn out and he's drinking too much. And then it only actually changed, I think, when I picked him up from the airport and I saw him and I thought, shit, he looks really ill. And he smells really ill too, because you could really smell the bacteria. And I thought, oh, he's not well at all. And then the following day when he didn't really eat anything, I was thinking, hmm, what's going on here? So I don't think in reality it did hit us until the Wednesday when his blood results came back. Well, Monday he'd gone to the doctors and we were thinking, yeah, he's possibly got glandular fever. Come back Wednesday, he's still not well. Wednesday, he was a little bit better, but he still didn't feel well. And he said, Mum, will you come with me? So I was glad I did, really. So the doctor had done some blood tests. And then it wasn't till about four o'clock when he phoned and said, you need to get to uh, the hospital as soon as possible because he's got massive neutropenia, uh, which is a decrease in the cells, which he explained to us. He said he has got glandular fever and you can get this response, but I think we're looking at something else by which time I knew what he was going to say, and then straight after the MRI. So they came in and said, look, you know, it's either ALL or AML, but we don't know. We can't confirm the diagnosis until we have a proper bone marrow biopsy. So we're going to refer you to the Christie tomorrow. And then we both looked at each other. It was like, right, OK, let's get on with it. I was fine because Tom was great. No, we, we had our cries, we had a little cry, and it was like, ooh, we need to tell Dad, which was the worst thing, because we knew that he would be just besides himself. You've just got to be there for them. You've got to be there to support them, to hold the hand, to be positive, be totally positive, because you can't sit and dwell on it. You've got a diagnosis, you've got to get on with it, it's a leukemia, it's a blood cancer, it, you know, it's pretty drastic. So you've got to follow the advice of whoever's there and, you know, you've, you've just, in a way, you've got to embrace it because there's nothing you can do about it. You've got to get on because if you don't, you're not going to be there. <laughs>